Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to review the book John Kozel's Amazing Grace. The full title is The Lives of Children and the Conscience of a Nation. Um, I read, I reviewed one of uh, Kozel's books recently, uh, Savage Inequalities, which dealt with the disparity between the most well-off uh, high schools in America, or, or schools in general, and the poorest schools in America. And as I said then, it was the most pressing book I have ever read, and I still believe that. Um, this book, however, is trying really hard to knock that other one off the top, because this deals with poverty specifically in New York and one particular neighborhood known as Mott Haven. Now, New York City has a lot of diversity. There are millions of people there, from Donald Trump to the people discussed in this book. Wealth disparity like quite possibly nowhere else in America. And it's distressful, because there are people in this book, children in this book, through no fault of their own, who live in apartments infested with roaches and rats, who suffer from asthma because of it, in places with holes in their ceilings, without functioning water or electricity, with crime and drug use everywhere, with buildings considered so violent that the cops don't want to enter. They attend substandard schools, substandard hospitals. They have been put into exile in ghettos. And all they've done is be born poor in the wealthiest nation on earth. For the cost of one bomber or one missile uh, carrier. We could destroy all the wealth disparity for children in this nation, but we don't. We would rather spend the money on instruments of war and destruction to fight an enemy that we don't have anymore. There are no armies that we need some of the weapons that we possess any longer. We spend 48% of our GDP on defense. That's obscene. I'd like to have it cut down to say 24%, if not less. We don't need the military we have, though I mean no dis disrespect to the brave service, per service personnel that work for us on behalf of our nation. But this book is a shining example what we do horribly wrong in this nation. And yes, I can already hear the comments. Oh, the poor don't do enough for themselves. Well, you know something? I hear lots of people on television and the radio and online and in newspapers complaining about the fact that people in exile don't do well for themselves. How about we stop putting them in exile? Because that's what a ghetto is. We are exiling them into obscurity, and that's what this book covers. It covers a parish where only one person has a car, where some, in some buildings a quarter of the people have AIDS, where children die from fires because the buildings are traps and have never been inspected properly. Now, when this book was written in 1994, uh, Mayor Giuliani was in charge, and it, in fact, during the era of this research, because it covered a number of years, um, he cut 20 housing inspectors from the New York City budget. Now, this means that the housing inspectors could no longer go in teams, in twos. They would go, go alone, and there were buildings that these guys, and women, which simply wouldn't enter by themselves, which meant these buildings were not going to get inspected. So how many kids got sick, got injured, or died because they saved 20 jobs. How many lives were decreased, made miserable to save those dollars? Those kids live in places that make Beirut look like a vacation spot. 
and I really wish I were exaggerating. Like, at least in Beirut, you know who the enemies are. There's a passage in the first chapter in here that I thought was the most telling in the entire book. A woman takes the author to a building near an overpass, a bypass, where the cars are racing by this neighborhood. Tourists and commuters going by every day, thousands of cars. And she points into it, and at first you can't figure out what she's pointing at. Then he realizes that the building has been painted. There's a mural on one side. And this mural depicts happy, well-adjusted, middle-class people's lives. On a building that's been abandoned, boarded up. Because the other side of the building, that's just plywood over, win over, over empty windows. The side of the building that the neighborhood faces is just deserted. But the side of the building that faces the highway, where all the people can see it, all those white people can see it, yeah. That shows lives that the people in that neighborhood who live there aren't ever going to have. The city of New York would rather spend money creating a facade, in the most literal definition of that word, of happy, well-adjusted people, rather than spend the money to help create happy, well-adjusted people. And yes, I know there are going to be commenters saying, but all the drug use in poor neighborhoods. The drug use in poor, poor neighborhoods are a symptom of a problem. They are not the problem itself. Poverty is the problem. And the final section of this book is a listing of all the people that died when this man was doing the research for it. Children, adults, teenagers. By accidents, fires, one fell down on an elevator shaft because the door didn't close properly. It's a war zone, and we throw children in there all the time. And it distresses me to no end. I've heard that Mr. Kozel has actually written a positive book. I may have to dig it up just so I can get something out of him that isn't so incredibly depressing. But he writes very well. Compelling, easy to read, entertaining. It pulls you in. It doesn't let you go. And that's important. He makes a comment at one point. While leaving a building, he's holding his breath, breathing through his mouth, because the hallway, the stairs he's going down, smell so bad. And he's thinking to himself that the kennel I keep my dogs at while I'm in New York City is cleaner than this place. What do you think the people that live in that building think about? What do you think the kids that grow up there think about New York City and the people that run it? The people that want to save money? more than make sure they have decent lives. Because these kids haven't done anything wrong. We've exiled them. We've made them exiles. And I think it shows that the conscience of our nation doesn't seem to really care. <laughs>